Hi guys, Mark here, and today we're looking at the advent of code day 16 problem. And today is all about, we're doing a little bit of detective work. We've got a present that Aunt Sue has given us, but unfortunately we have 500 Aunt Sues and we don't know which one gave us the present. Fortunately, we have some clues, thanks to some machine that we've got that can give us some clues about which Aunt Sue it is. And our machine has deduced the following facts about Aunt Sue. And so what we need to do is to look through all 500 of our Aunt Sues and see which of those Aunt Sues matches up with these facts. However, we don't know everything about all our Aunt Sues. So if we look in the input for our puzzle, we will see that we've got just three facts about each of our Aunt Sue's. And so we've got to match these up with the clues. So as usual, we'll look first at how I tackled this in C sharp, and then we'll move on to look at an F sharp solution. So here we are in C sharp. And one of the first things we needed to do was just put our clues in. Now, I did initially start by parsing out the clues from a string, but I thought this would be a nice opportunity to use a new C Sharp 6 feature that I haven't used yet, and that is this dictionary initializer syntax. So you can say, I want a new dictionary of, sting, of string to int, and the key children has a value of 3, the key cats has a value of 7. This is just a slightly more succinct way of setting up a dictionary that's quite nice. So I put my clues in, and then I need to read all the information that I know about all the Sues. And we've done quite a lot of regular expressions now in the advent of code challenge, so I won't go into great detail. However, each line on the input has many traits. Well, it has three traits each line. So we're looking for a match of a word, a colon and a space, and then a number. And so, for each match, we, we have to use regex.matches and then pick out all the groups and parse out into a dictionary of the trait and its value. And I'm putting that into an array. So for each Sue, we have a dictionary of the traits we know about that particular Sue. And so part one of the problem was relatively straightforward. We just needed to look through each of the Sues and decide whether that Aunt Sue was a candidate to be the one who'd sent us the present. And the way I did this was I used the two parameters select because all of the Sues are in ascending order. So on the first line of the file is Sue number one. So I didn't actually need to parse out the name of the Aunt Sue in my parsing part. But I do need to keep track of which Sue we're doing the match on. And we're basically, for each Sue, going through all of our clues and seeing if it rules out that Sue. So for each clue, we look to see if in the dictionary of things we know about that Sue has got that key. And if it has got that key, does it match the value? If it hasn't got the key, then this one might be a match. And we have to, for all of the clues, match on this particular Sue. And I've just got a where here, actually, really, this should be a single, because I'm only expecting one um, match in this whole thing. If I get more than one match, then it's a bit, of, then it's a problem. And for part B, the way that you tested whether the Sue was a match was a bit more complicated. For cats and trees, the number had to be greater, and for Pomeran Pomeranians and goldfish, the number had to be less. But apart from that, Part B was very similar. So let's just run this to prove that it works with that change to use single. And there we can see we found the single Sue that matched whose number is 213 and match was true. Now, as always, my practice is to try and solve this myself in C sharp and F sharp. But then I do like to look at other people's solutions to see what I can learn from what they've done. And one thing I noticed from someone called Jeff who posted an F sharp solution was that I had overcomplicated the testing of each Sue. Because I was going through all of the clues, I had to check whether in the Sue dictionary 
that particular key existed. However, if you do it the other way around, you simplify things quite a bit. If for each Sue you go through everything you know about that Sue and check whether it matches up with the clues you've got, then you don't need to do the check for whether it's in the dictionary because our clues contain all possible keys whereas the facts we know about the Sue's only contain a subset of these keys. And so as we'll see when I look at the F-sharp code now, I take advantage of that insight to make the code a little bit simpler. So here we have the F-sharp code and the approach I took here does have some similarities to what I did in C-sharp. I made this parse facts function that does the regular expression matching um, using this slightly nicer syntax, it still is a pain to work with regex matches in C sharp and F sharp, and parse them out into a sequence of tuples of the trait name and the number associated with it. And that allows me not only to use this parse facts for the entire input file, but I also put the clues that we know about into that same format so I can parse that out as well. And I parse that into a dictionary. So I have a dictionary of my clues. In fact, it's not a dictionary, it's a, a map, which is kind of F sharp's version of a dictionary. And I have an array of all of the Sue's, which has got tuples of the traits that we know. And then I've got two matching functions. For, the, for part A, we just need to check whether a particular clue matches the number of that trait. And for part B, we use pattern matching. If it's cats or trees, then it's greater than. If it's Pomeranians or goldfish, it's less than. Otherwise, we're looking for the same. And this means that our finding function just needs to take all of the Sue's. And then F sharp has got a very handy find index method. So basically it goes through your array and the first thing that matches it will return the index which is handy. And so for each of the Sue's we take all the traits, that's all the things we know about that Sue, and we pass them into sequence.forall which is F sharp's version of links all method. So it will just check whether this is true for all traits. So for all traits we see if it matches our clues. And if it does, if it's true for all, then find index will return the index of that Sue. Now, of course, indexes are zero based and the first line of the file is Sue one. So we need to add one and we can do this by piping it into the plus function with a parameter of one. And so that's a fairly simple and nice solution, I think, in F sharp. Again, in the comments, let me know if there's any ways I could improve on this. And I hope you'll join me for day 17.